will harness the sun and the winds and the soil to fuel our cars and run our factories, and we will transform our schools and colleges and universities to meet the demands of a new age. If you take a broad view of what jobs involving these new technologies would involve, I think you'll find that they will embrace a big part of the economy. We have a broken economic compass. We have an economy where the only output that is being measured is produced output. GDP growth does not account for, does not capture the many values of flows from nature into the economy. People have the fear sometimes that they've either got to choose between having a job or saving the planet, if you like. Now, we believe that the major task before us as trade unions is to reconcile people's needs for a decent job with the task of moving towards a low-carbon future. Governments in developed countries have announced green measures in the stimulus packages designed to reactivate the global economy. In this episode of Nature Inc, we look at the promise of a global green economy and ask if the investments being promised can really create new jobs that will be sustainable. For decades, the environmentalists have said that investing in sustainable development will lead to sustainable job creation. At a recent conference on green jobs in Washington, D.C., the global recession seemed to be creating a platform for the switch to a greener economy. Amongst the speakers were environmental activists. Are we locusts? Are we going to drive mass extinction until we extinguish ourselves? Are we locusts or are we honeybees? Let's be brave. Let's build a green growth alliance. Leaders of the United Nations. Environmentalism in the 21st century is about the jobs in our economies of tomorrow and where our children are going to find a way to make a living on a planet which is rapidly losing its very capacity to sustain us. And perhaps most surprisingly, traditional workers' organizations, like America's Steel Workers' Union. This is where we're going to make it clear that it's not asset bubbles and credit crunches and currency manipulations that will drive this agenda in the future. It's going to be an agenda where we understand that we'll all do better when we all do better at being green. The government of Singapore has made the small island state self-sufficient in fresh water. The Singapore authorities estimate that 11,000 new jobs are being created as a result of environmentally sound water technologies. Wind power helped the small island of Samso in Denmark become carbon neutral, a country where a fifth of the power comes from investment in renewable energy. The World Wind Energy Association estimates there are already more than 300,000 jobs in this sector mainly in Germany, the US and Spain. Worldwide, more are employed in the renewable energy sector than in oil and natural gas extraction, according to the UN. Faced with one of the worst unemployment rates in Europe, the Spanish government is actively pursuing a green agenda as a solution. China has earmarked 140 billion of its 586 billion dollar package for green investments. But can investment in renewable energy and environmentally sound industries really create the millions of jobs needed for the 200 million who, according to the UN, are unemployed around the world? China just wants to be a responsible member of the world. And in so doing, it's got to keep its environmental commitments and it's got to promote environmental protection. It's also got to maintain its economic growth and it's got to ensure its social stability. Promoting green economy 
helps it again do both in a policy coherence way. During China's extravagant showcase to the world, the Beijing Olympics, one of the green measures encouraged by the government was the installation of these green toilets in the Olympic arenas. For the Olympics, the government made subsidies so we can grow and create our toilets. Even in the economic crisis, we are favoured by the government and receive special loans so we can grow. The clever toilets do not need water, using recycled urine to flush, and have an inbuilt system that treats the waste. And now we have to sit and wait a minute. The toilet has an inbuilt timer that helps it to recognize what kind of deposit is being made. The company is now making 30,000 toilets per year, but these kind of measures are quite literally a flash in the pan. While China aims to quadruple its GDP by 2020, it must cope with the environmental damage its rush to industrialize will cause. So is the green economy green for all or green for a few? Buenos Aires, Argentina. Workers' protests are a common occurrence. The call here is for better pay, better representation and more political power. There is little apparent awareness that turning green can buttress economic growth and create new jobs. 80% of the world's workforce lives in developing countries and the prime concern here is improving living standards. One thing is the wish of European workers to fight for the return of a greener welfare state. While we in the developing world aim at least to be able to reach a decent standard of living, international trade union agreements on working conditions are the floor for workers in developed nations. For us, they're the ceiling. A meeting of Latin American trade union leaders in Buenos Aires discussing how to introduce climate change into their agenda. These meetings are organized by Sustain Labour, an organization that believes workers and trade unions can play a vital role in the transition to a more sustainable green economy. But for workers in the poorest nations struggling for better conditions, going green can seem a luxury. This is a new for us, totally new. This is something completely new for us, but we understand it's important. Climate change causes expenses that the government could not imagine. It's had an effect on companies and development. So like it or not, we're going to have to face this together. Frankly, we are like newly borns when it comes to the green economy. In my country, there is absolutely no sense that we have to work together as a nation to create a sustainable economy that has a real effect in changing people's understandings of the threats we face.